The assembly hall is jam-packed with young kids who are assembling together in the middle of the day before they go into their lunch break, singing the praises of Jesus. But there's so many kids that can't get in. So we are expanding. We're expanding so that we can help accommodate more of Bloomer's kids. But this is as far as we've gotten because we need funds. Funds to complete the vision so that we can continue to rescue the parish and care for the dying. This is an underprivileged nation. But those of you who have substance can provide a privilege for a young boy, a young girl to go to school and to reach their dreams, their hopes and their vision. So help me complete this great work so that more kids, more students can come and um, fulfill the call of God that is on their life. I've not shown you one snotty nosed kid I've not shown you one kid with a big belly, malnutritioned, starving, not one. And I refuse to, because great is our God and greatly to be praised in the mountains of his holiness, in the beauty of his righteousness, he has given us resources to rescue our children. And none of these, none of these will fall prey to the hands of the adversary. And that feeling that you have in your spirit and in your belly is God telling you that he's given seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And I need some of the bread that you've been eating and I commission and command you to sow a seed so we can finish the work of God and do great and mighty exploits for him. I'm looking forward to you doing what God has told you to do and lives are going to be changed.
like you, O oh God, in all of the earth. I feel, I feel breakthrough coming in, so I want to send angels to your house and angels to where you are so you can receive this deliverance today, this morning. When we've been there, infirmities for we know not what to pray for as we ought. The Holy Ghost makes intercession for us. Groanings that can't be uttered. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. Amazing
Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We bless God on tonight. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord on tonight. We thank him for our being here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are honored to be here on tonight. Yeah, let's just take a moment and just give him our worship on tonight. Let's give him our worship. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're so worthy, God. We bless you on tonight. We honor you. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for making ways for us. Thank you for opening doors. God, thank you for healing us. Thank you for delivering us. Thank you for saving us. Hallelujah. We bless our God on tonight. We bless our God on tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you and we are honored to be in your presence in your house of worship one more time, Father. We pray, Father, that you will meet us here on tonight. We pray, God, that I, I, our souls will be blessed on tonight. We pray, God, that what we're about to experience, God, that it will cause a change and turnaround in our lives. Thank you, God, for the man and woman servant of this house, Apostle Fred D. Gooden and Lady Jamila Gooden. Thank you for the host of the host of this conference, Bishop Bloomer. God, thank you for those of us who have gathered on tonight, Father, for we need to be enlightened, Lord. God, show us what you need to show us. Inform us on what we need to know. Open our hearts and minds now for understanding in the spiritual realm. We honor you, Father. Oh, we honor you, Father. We honor you, Father. Hallelujah. We honor you, hallelujah. Yes, Lord Jesus, yes. Now have your way on tonight. Say what you need to say, Lord. Bless everyone gathered here. Bless those who are online worshiping with us on tonight. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you all the praise. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Before our praise and worship ministry comes, I'm going to ask if everyone will take out their cellular devices. Go to this page. Go to the service on our page, on YouTube, on Facebook, and share tonight's service. There's someone that needs to hear what's about to be released in this house on tonight. There's someone that needs to hear what's about to be released on tonight. And so we're asking if you will take out your cellular devices and share this message. Thank you for those who are online and service with us on tonight. If you all would share, use your evangelism tool, which is your finger, and share this service on tonight so that those who can't make it, those that need to hear, can hear what the Lord has to say to us in this hour. Let us receive now the praise and worship ministry of Unity Charlotte International. Come on, give God praise. What's the highest praise? What's the highest praise? Come on, every individual that's in the house, what's the highest praise? Come on, I need y'all to come on with me. Come on, what's the highest praise? Come on, what's the highest What's the highest praise? Come on, what's the highest praise? Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give you praise tonight. We give you glory tonight. We give you honor tonight. We lift our hands and tell God you're welcome to have your way. Come on, you're welcome to have your way. Move by your spirit, move by your power. Come on, can we invite the Holy Spirit in? Say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Come on, say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Yeah. Say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Say, here I am. Use me as you please. Come on, I need y'all to open up your spirit. I need y'all to open up your mind. I need y'all to welcome the Holy Spirit in tonight. Shake off what you've been in here tonight. And allow the Holy Spirit to move by his spirit. God, we welcome you to send down your fire. Send down your anointing. Come on, let's go to the well tonight. Open up your mouth. Open up. 
worship sound like ho oh, oh, ho oh. before we sing a song come on before we render a song to him come on give him adoration tonight and we just gonna begin to welcome him in we gonna begin to welcome him in we gonna begin to welcome him in yeah that's it come on yep yeah. uh-huh yep yeah, I hear you I hear you I hear you come on don't watch us come on open up your mouths y'all come on open
Consuming fire 
through consuming fire
hear y'all sing it tonight. Every individual singer right there, this is Holy Ground. Come on, y'all. Come on, put three-part harmony with it. Hey. Everybody, everybody sing it. This is Holy Ground. Everybody, hey. Let's go to the well tonight. Hey, hey, this is holy ground. Everybody right there. Everybody sing, this is holy. This is holy ground. This is holy.
I feel like the realms are primed right now. I feel like realms are primed right now. Dimensions are opening. Some of you, this is extremely important. Hadn't been this excited about something in a long time. And so posture is important. Because it doesn't matter who you came with. This is about your self-discovery. Does it mean that you have anything that may be wrong with you or tormenting you? But just the fact that God will expose some things. That there, that there, there are things that are peeping from the other side that wants to come and destroy your generational wealth. And I'm not talking about your money. And so you that are online right now, you that are streaming in my Facebook, that my YouTube, Patreon, it's so important right now that you get distractions out the atmosphere. Because it's been a long time since a lot of us have been here. So let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I need to hear your expectation. I need to hear expectation in your worship. I need to hear some expectation. I was talking to a friend of mine. And I was telling him, I said, listen, you want to come to this. This is a meat eaters conference. This isn't something for babies. This is meat eaters. This is something that if you feed on it right, you'll eat off it the next 20 years. If you're in here, come on, clap your hands. This is the Intel Conference. Inside national territories, exposing. Clap your hands for the man of God, Bishop George Bloomer. We're going to do it in the right way, but right now, right now, right now, listen, what we want to do is we want to take up an expense offering. We want to set the ground. Are y'all in here? We want to set the ground for what the Lord is getting ready to do. Because watch this. There is no value that you can put on some of the information that's getting ready to break some stuff that's around you. The hand clap got light right there. Don't compare Don't compare what you'll get out of this to what you'll give into this. Right now, we want to take up a light expense offering. We want to take up a light expense offering right now. Listen, we want you to get $60. Get $60. Apostle, why six? Six is the number of man. And we're looking for him to take us and to shift us into places where we had not seen and been. But we have to travel from man to the spirit in order to be able to see it. Get a $60 seed right now. I need you to get a $60 seed. You that are online right now, right now, because there's something getting ready to happen for some of you out there that you are not, you're not going to believe the way that God is getting ready to give you information that's getting ready to shift your life. 
And so many of so many of us have testimonies about one thing that we heard that changed everything. I think that's getting ready to happen for everybody that's in here. So you that are online right now, uh, the Giving Ways or Cash app is a Zelle. It's Givelify. It's PayPal. Those are the ways to give. Get that seed right now. Get your seed right now. Apostle, I don't have that $60 seed right now. Well, I want you, I want you to buy faith. Put a seed in there. A sacrificial seed that you know God will be pleased with in this moment. Are we ready? If you would, everybody standing, everybody standing, everybody standing. I don't want to talk too much. I'm really, I got all my, I got books and notes and all kind of stuff. This is the stuff I love right here. How many of you love this type of stuff? Warfare ecology. Come on, I love this type. Don't be scared. I say I love this type of stuff right here. We're going to pray over the offering. Father, we thank you right now, God. Let this seed break forth ground. Let it open up, God, into some areas of our lives that the enemy has been able to cover. Let this seed, God, be what breaks the ground, that uproots, break forth, and bring forth. Father, I thank you right now, Father, for what we're doing now by faith and for what will come out of it. God, for this, God, we give you praise, we give you honor, God, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, shout amen in here. Come on up here and give. If you have your electronic device, if you would, come in here, take that electronic device and connect with that basket. Come on, connect with that basket. Take your electronic device and connect with that basket. Come on, we're giving. We're giving. Come on, put that seed in the ground. Put that seed in the ground. I have an expectation, God. There's something that I especially need the man of God to deal with. Put that seed in the ground. Glory to God. Amen. Amen, amen. I'm going to ask my beautiful wife to come up here. Come on, clap your hands. Amen, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. I want to say that I'm excited. I'm very excited. I like this type of stuff. I really, really do. Listen. I want to just give honor to all of the ecclesiastical offices, all of the bishops and pastors. Will you please just stand? All the pastors and leaders, would you just stand so we can acknowledge you? We want to say thank God for you. If you're online, go into warfare. Uh, if you're online, we want to say to those of you who are online, we want to say thank you. I, I have the pleasure to introduce uh, the general of spiritual warfare. And I'm excited about this because... I remember years ago, uh, we were in New Jersey, and I was listening to him prolifically speak. But, but, but what, what blew my mind about this specific conference is that it is necessary. Mm -hmm. The world needs it. I, I don't know why churches 
are now quiet when it comes down to the things of God. If you're going to be a believer, be a believer and read the entire book where Jesus dealt with things of this nature. And as I begin to sit there, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me and said, the warfare is quiet in the church. And listen to me, I understand that you're going through things and psychologically and mentally things happen and there are challenges, but this is real. Sometimes you don't know what you're dealing with, but if you silence the voice, if you silence the power that God has given us to tread over serpents and scorpions, you will be overtaken by something that you cannot control because you don't understand it is necessary. And these type of conferences need to come back to the church. You want to know what's wrong with your son? You want to know what's wrong with your daughter? You want to know what's wrong with your money, your marriage, and your mind? It's not always something that's happening natural, but it's a spiritual thing. And the Lord has ordained a man for such a time as this. He said, go into the camps. Go into the highways and the byways. Set the sons and daughters free. Set the captive free. It is time to bring warfare back to the church. is I walked inside of journey I walked inside of Spencer I walked inside of these teenagers clothing store and so they're now wearing clothes where they are comfortable with their demons they're wearing clothes and things of this nature and parents don't realize that they open up a portal and my son used to be a good boy my daughter used to be a good girl but something happened and the church is quiet the church y'all done gone silent so what do you do when the church has gone quiet but the nation has taken demonic warfare and put it in your classroom what do you do when we are now entertaining songs like Don't You Cat? What do you do? Now the church is quiet. And so God has allowed this man to resurrect the necessary tactics we need to fight the enemy. And so thank you for being the general of spiritual warfare. It's real. It's real. It's real. I don't know why y'all don't think this is real. I don't know why the church don't want to deal with it because the church has become powerless. And so I want to say thank you, Bishop. And so if you're online, this is no time for you to play. Go and put your babies to bed. Get your pens and your pads and your paper. Everyone on their feet. Because we are getting ready to welcome the general. If you don't do nothing tonight, you should hear by way of the Holy Spirit what the man of God has to say to the church. What do you do when you're a leader and someone comes inside of your church and they don't want prayer? They want you to deal with stuff that's in their house. And so what society has done is told you it ain't real. Everybody depressed. Everybody got anxiety. Some of this stuff is spiritual. And the church is quiet because they don't know how to handle it. But the Lord has ordained a man for such a time as this. Put your hands together. I want you to click, tag, and share for the general of spiritual warfare. And he goes by the name and the office and the power and the authority to tread over serpents and scorpions. This is Bishop George Bloomer. Oh, y'all, come on, y'all, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. an introduction like that I better come with it tonight huh let's give the Lord a great big praise on tonight come on let's give him a great big praise that's that was a little one now I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to do probably what you what you don't want to do uh, just uh, for tonight I've been, uh, they're tweaking the mic, so, so I'm going to talk while they're, while, while they're doing that. First of all, I'm going to ask you to do tonight what uh, 
you probably don't want to know uh, tonight. But I've been doing these conferences for about 36 years. Every conference, every city, everywhere, it starts off just like this tonight. Because most Christian people, they'll dance and they'll shout, they'll speak in tongues. But when you mention the devil, they go in the opposite direction. They, they treat, they treat um, warfare conferences like they treat communion. You know, most saints don't take communion because they've been taught things about it that is not necessarily true. Uh, they've been taught in the area of communion. This is warfare, but they've been taught in the area of communion. If you're not right, don't take the communion. When the scriptures actually says that if you're not right, take a moment, get right, and take it. Because if you don't take it, then you won't be right. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you to do what you don't want to do. I want to use these first two sections Right, right here within these, with these, with these, in these walls. I want you to move over this way, and uh, if you're already in the place, you, you're good. We're gonna move up, and so make sure that everybody has someone sitting next to them, and you, you're gonna understand this in a few minutes. So scoot on over, scoot on over on that side. Come on over right there. Y'all good right there? This right here, just right there. You, you good? You good? You good? Y'all, y'all, y'all on that, that side. Come on over there. Yeah. All right. Give the Lord a hand clap as they're coming. <laughs> And if I can, I would like for you, uh, for, for the uh, host of this uh, conference to come back for a few minutes. We, I, want, I want to talk to you re real briefly so we can establish, you and the pastor, so you, you, we can establish what happened and how we got to where we are right, right, right here. And again, I want to say I better come with it after that introduction. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. And, and, and they're, they're probably watching from all different. Oh, and I want to honor uh, uh, Bishop uh, Brown is here from L.A. And Apostle uh, Taylor is here from uh, you know, Cape Girard. You know, Girard is in um, Missouri from, from, from Missouri. There's a few other pastors that are here from, pastors that are here from, where are you 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 from. High point, high point. All right, good. So I was asked to, you can be seated real quickly, and then we're going to go into this. It's going to be powerful uh, tonight. Um, I was asked, um, uh, the Lord laid upon my heart to do a 20, to go, to, go to 20 cities across the United States of America, uh, the, the latter part of this year into the middle of, of next year, before we branch out into going into our own crusades again. And he wanted me to go into churches. Okay, and um, so uh, we put the word out and then we started getting uh, pastors from different places asking us to, uh, to come. And so we had uh, um, this particular area, uh, there was two ministries that, that asked us to come. But I had came for the, op the, the closing of the uh, She Favor. That's, I said it right? Yeah. She Favor. Um, and um, I sort of kind of felt that at, at the being in that meeting and the aftermath of that meeting, because we, we had the services over there, right. but the services after the service, Fred, right. after the service was the killer for me. They was calling me from everywhere. And then you all did little kind of things and threw, threw up things online and all that kind of stuff. And so I felt that this would be the place to come. I reached out to, uh, to, to Bishop, to Apostle, and uh, I shared with him, and within, within a day, you two were on the line, and you were saying, okay, well, so and so. But what I didn't know is uh, that God was resurrecting something in me that had gotten quiet also. Uh, uh, the, the pandemic, when the pandemic hit, the pandemic hit and put everything on pause. But at the time that the pandemic uh, hit, I was going through something emotionally and I was ready. My Brooklyn was coming out of me and I was fighting a whole network for millions of dollars and my whole mindset was, was on that. And um, I, I, I say this on, uh, a lot, uh, that accusations and criticisms are the final stage before spiritual promotion. And then the caveat to it is you can always tell how blessed you're gonna be tomorrow by how much hell you're going through right now. But as a preacher, most times when we speak, 
we're speaking to the people. We don't realize that it has to be tested ourselves. So you say it for a number of times, and then when that thing shows up in your own personal life, you're like, whoa, what? I, I, I was talking to y'all. I didn't think that I had to go through right, right. in order. Right. And so um, uh, uh, the, the pandemic came, and because uh, I, was, I was out of the game, and the pandemic came, and uh, God put me in front of a screen for three years. I wasn't able to travel. I didn't go. I didn't travel. Our church uh, was, was closed for two of the three years. And, and uh, it, it was growing while closed, things was happening, but I was out of the game. So God had not only, when I said I was done, he put the whole world on pause during the time that I was saying that I was done. So no one knew that I was done because everybody was done. Right. You got it, right? But when I started talking to you two, I realized that coming to she favor was the prophetic bait to stir me in that area. Now, uh, they hadn't invited me to Charlotte. No one invited me to Charlotte until I showed up at <laughs> She Favor. So she's favoring me, you know. <laughs> you got it, right? And so that was the whole thing. So my plan was there that it would be it would be a miscarriage and a mishandling of what God has given if I would have gone anywhere before, before coming here. But I didn't remember how we met until the Hoshi favor thing came up. Right. For the Lord dropped you in my spirit to do an interview yeah. for, 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 the, for, for the networks right. and all this was going, so, so God was, he was putting it together. When God starts putting something together, a lot of times you think he's doing this thing. He never tells you what he's doing. He just wants you to obey him. He tells the children of Israel that you're going to the promised land. He don't tell them they're going to be in the wilderness for 40 years before That's they right. get there. Right. So these, these, these are things you, got to, you just got to lean and, and, and depend on God. But the Lord used you and he used you to speak into my heart about, um, and it just stirred up the, uh, the old George Bloomer with a revelation that has been revealed to us according to the book of Daniel, wait until a time when knowledge increase. Yeah. So there were things that God showed me 15 years ago that when I was saying it, I was being attacked by ministers because technology hadn't caught up to what was being said and I had to learn the difference between prophetic insight and prophetic utterance. That there are things that God shows you that you're not to say. Yeah. 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 And, yep. and if you say it, you hurt yourself before that particular time comes. And so I'm just thankful to God for you opening up the, uh, for, for the doors. This crowd tonight is extraordinary. I know you might not believe it, but it's extraordinary because most believers have been hijacked by, the, by a satanic spirit that's called form. Mm -hmm. Everybody say form. We, we read it this way, a form of godliness, deny, but it's the, 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 the spirit is called form. It is a shape shifter. It, dis, it, 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 it's like a chameleon. It, it, it forms into whatever is necessary in that moment that's going to keep you away from the knowledge of God. Wow. That's, how, that's how it operates. We'll talk a little wow. bit about that. And so um, I didn't just want to come up here and, and do a regular service. If you're looking for old-fashioned preaching. We're going to kick up and crawl up under the chairs. And some of you are going to crawl, but it, it won't be for that reason. <laughs> up under the chairs. This is, this is three intense days of master class in the area of spiritual warfare that's going to release your money, your, your, your memory. Uh, it's going to release your ministry, uh, your family. It's going to do a whole lot of things, but it's also going to put you under an attack, and God is going to have to give you prophetic secret service individuals to protect you from the bombs that are going to be pointed at you for the knowledge that you're going to receive tonight. So I'm going to start off by, I, I talked a long time, but I'm going to start off by saying this. Normally when I first open up an interview, if I do an interview with anybody, I, I do a little, what they call one for one. Mm -hmm. And this is your house. And the way, the reason for the one for one is to uh, set the atmosphere or, or pick up what is in the atmosphere that I might be missing. So um, I'll give you a word and you tell me what's the first thing that comes to your mind with that word before we go into the lesson on tonight. Uh, the first word is deliverance. Bondage. 
bondage. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Um, warfare. Mm -hmm. Or unfair war. Unfair war. Unfair war. Wow. Mm -hmm. Satanic struggle. Satanic. Church. Body. Bondage. Bondage. I'll throw the word out again. Church. Church. Lifeless. Empty. Wow. Church. Do you see what the atmosphere is doing around? Okay. The atmosphere begins to shift because the words that they speak confronts the form wow. that you've been under. And once you understand that, understand what is in the mind of the leader then you'll understand what's in the manifestations of the body. We'll talk about that in a few seconds. Church. Weak. Shackled. Weak, shackled. Now, with that information, those things that they uh, spoke about just the past few minutes, what do you think Satan is doing right now? What do you think Satan has to do in order to stop them from thinking like that? Because Satan does not want leaders to think that the church is weak, uh, lifeless, uh, stagnated. Satan wants the church to believe that is at its best. Wow. That's his job. That is at its best. Having a form of godliness. Right. What? De de denying the power thereof. Okay, mother. Absent. Wow. Mother. Non nurturing. So, your word for mother was? Nurturer. Nurturer. And your word was? Absent. absent. Why, did, why did you say absent? Because I don't feel that we still have that anointing that came with the mothers. The mothers are not, the motherly anointing is not present with leaders or people. Mm. So we're missing our matriarchs. Mm -hmm. So what role do you feel that the mothers in the church were to play? And, it, and, and, and is, is, is your wife a mother in the church? Most definitely. Okay. One of the last that I've come in contact with, um, the mothers that I knew taught me just by watching them. Mm -hmm. They taught me posture. They taught me humility. They taught me when to speak. They taught me when not to speak. And this was all a lot of nonverbal conversation. Mm -hmm. And the church now is missing that because they won't respect the mothers. Mm -hmm. Even if the mother says something to them, mm -hmm. this church, and I won't say generation because I believe it's a, it's a sleeping church thing that won't recognize authorities except it's abusive. Wow. It won't recognize authority except it's, it's abusive. I wrote a book entitled Authority Abuses. So you need to, but you, um, we probably should start right here because he, 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 he tapped into something. Yeah. Now, um, each one of you have a little booklet, right? Mm -hmm. On the booklet, I want you to write your name on the top of it. Mm -hmm. And then in the back of the booklet, in the, stay right there. In the back of the booklet, uh, there is, if you go into a doctor's office, they give you this chart and they ask you, are you allergic to this, that, the other? We want you to, uh, uh, in the back of your booklet, and that's going to be your guide for the next day, few days or so, uh, um, you check off the area that you might be having some problems with, whether it's sleeping, dealing with demonic forces, a voodoo, a hex, whatever the situation is, uh, you, 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 you check that off. So when we go into the part of the deliverance service, I'm not a prophet. I won't have to see in the realm of the spirit. You tell me what you think the problem is, and then we'll, 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 we'll deal with that. Now, this is what I want to say. Um, how many of you have ever been to court? 
been to court before. Wow, a lot of criminals in here, ain't it right? <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> okay, in the courtroom, if you have a case that goes before the judge, where is the case won? Where's the case won? Someone can give you a, where's the case won? Well, let me throw it in there for you. He says the case is one in the deliberation room, okay, and in the chambers. What would you say to me if I were to tell you that the case is one in the attorney's office before they even get to the courtroom? And who wins the case? Not the attorney, the paralegal. The one that prepares the case, gets all of the information together, and presents it to the lawyer. If the lawyer fails in the courtroom, it's because the lawyer has not paid attention to timing, pregnant pauses, and he didn't read the room. Because you don't win a case in the United States of America on being innocent or guilty. You win the case by argument. And that's what we come to do tonight in the name of Jesus. We come to argue scriptures so that they lay in the right place. Uh, get ready for God to do something supernatural in your life, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Much of the teaching is gonna come out of my book, uh, Witchcraft in the Pews or Intel, and uh, you'll be able to get that. All right, now, I, I need, we, we're gonna be responding back and forth with, with, with each other. Uh, um, I told you there's not going to be a lot of preaching, uh, uh, or if the preach comes, we'll go with it, but it's uh, uh, a master class. So now, if we were going to have a spiritual warfare conference, and we were going to uh, uh, use a scripture, by the raising of your hand, I need you to participate with me, uh, we're going to use a scripture, what scripture would we go to if we were going to start dealing with uh, spiritual warfare? Wait, yes. Okay, so he said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Okay, mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, right? Uh, who else? We want to do a warfare conference. You know, who, who else? Come on, come on, guys, come on. I can't, I can't, I need to see your hands. So I know who I'm talking about. Yeah. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Okay, so you would use that as a scripture to do a warfare, to enter into a warfare conference. Okay? I'm not saying that anyone is wrong. I'm saying what comes to your mind when you hear it. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, so you would do Ephesians, uh, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Okay, very, very good. And you would go to put it on the whole arm of God. Okay, so y'all on the same page, right? Okay? Try the spirit by the spirit, the seeds of God. Okay, or try the spirit by the spirit, the seeds of God. Okay, now, you, we would have a little bit of a problem in using that one. And this is what we're going to talk about tonight. There's not a scripture in the Bible that says, try the spirit by the spirit. The scripture says, try every spirit to see whether it is of God. Try the spirit by the spirit is something that preachers have said over and over and over again. And so when battling the enemy, a lot of times... We know more about church than we know about God. That's why Satan wants to make the church look strong in order for him to control it. That we went back into the what? Form. form. Come on, everybody say it. What? The form. The, 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 in, in, into the form. Okay? Uh, so now we'll, 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 we'll take off by the spirit and we'll put uh, 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 to see rather. Try the spirit. Now, how is the spirit tried? We'll get into that in a few, in, in, in a few minutes. So... Uh, let's take two more if we're going to, you're going to start off with, yes. It says what? Okay, so now if we're going to have a warfare conference, she's going to take us to, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Okay? Uh, yes? I can't hear you. What, what's the scripture? And, 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 and you can quote it out, what, what you were saying. Give it to me again. 
Okay? So, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Okay? So that's the, that's the scripture that you're going to use to which God. Now, if I were to ask you this question, I'm going to ask you this. If I were to ask you the question, why did you use that scripture? What, what, why did you use yours, yours was son, yours was for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Okay? And yours was put on the whole arm of God. All right? And uh, yours was the, the, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> the stronghold spirit, <laughs> scripture, right? And yours was, uh, uh, in the beginning was, w- w- was the word. And there was another one that came from back there somewhere. Uh, your, yours was no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Okay, so you ain't even going to fight. <laughs> no, that's the scripture. If you say no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper, you ain't even fighting. This is, you ain't even entering into the witch call because the, the, what am I going to do when it can't do nothing to me? You know, that, that's okay. Right. All right, so this, this now becomes extremely important for us to understand. Now, the scripture that you two uh, horned in on is the scripture that most people use when we are going engaging in spiritual warfare and we're going to have uh, 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 um, it's Ephesians uh, chapter number 6 verse number 10 and this is how it starts off pastor starts off it says finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and the power of his might stop if it starts off by saying finally that means the battle is already what already won so why are we there what, are we, what, in, what, what in God's name are we doing there? Because warfare doesn't start from verse 6 or down to 15. It starts in verse number 1 of chapter number 6. So if you got your Bibles real quickly, let's go to, let's go to um, uh, Ephesians chapter number uh, 6, verse number 1. Ephesians 6, verse number 1. Ephesians 6, verse number 1. Uh, and my Bible is not good. Who, you got it right? Read, read, read that for me right there. there, there, there. Children, there. obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Okay, it opens up and it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Let's do this together. What's, everybody say what? Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Next verse. Honor thy father and thy mother. Read, just let's, let's let one person read so we can, so we, go ahead. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. So stop right there. Warfare starts off in, in Ephesians chapter number six, verse number one. And this is what it says. It says what? Verse number one says, children, children obey, your parents, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. This is right. The next verse says what? Honor thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Okay, so now, the first rule of spiritual warfare is what? Obey. Obey your parents. No. Let's go back to the verse again. The verse says this. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Not talking about your physical parents. It's talking about your pastors and your leaders. The next verse, he talks about physical parents. Are you ready? He says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Now, the next verse, he says what? Honor. Honor, Stop. He doesn't. Once you get born again, your obedience in your spiritual life goes to the ones who birth you spiritually or the ones that God has set over your spiritual life. You're born again. Your physical parents enters into, they're emeritized. They receive honor, but leadership receives obedience because obedience and disobedience sets you up for worship or witchcraft. Let's do it. Worship. Obedience, witchcraft, disobedience. The Bible says all disobedience is as the sin of what? Witchcraft. Witchcraft. 
Did we start off good yet? Yes. Very, very important, right? So now warfare starts off there. The next verse says what? That it may be well with thee. That it may be well with thee. And that thou mayest live long on the earth. Now, if I just got born again and I'm in a church and I'm under these pastors and these pastors are telling me now how to live, uh, my resources are committed to the church, I'm, I'm changing, my parents might get upset if they ain't born again. That's what happened to me. My parents said, what, what you doing down in that church? They, they, man, that kind of stuff went on, right? He said that it may be well with thee. Uh-huh. And then he says what? And thou mayest live long on the earth. So if you honor your physical parents, you will live long upon the face of the earth, and it's going to be well with you. Watch this here. And ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath. Bring his mic down just a little bit. And ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath. But remember the, remember the conflict that we talked about a little while ago? But bring them up in the what? In the nurture, nurture and, admonition of the Lord. and admonition of the Lord. Now, everybody shout out and say, this is a Hebrew text. It's a Hebrew text. All right? Because you've got to understand that if we're going to understand Scripture tonight, you've got you to start putting the Bible in its proper place. And the saints have, through this form, have taken Scriptures and thrown them all over the place. We've got to stop that. Okay, we got to stop that. We're going to talk about that in a quick second. Okay, next verse. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters. See, servants, so, 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 uh, servants, be obedient to them that are your masters. For, 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 for hundreds of years, slave masters have used this on slaves. They put scriptures on them, they, they, they use the Bible. Okay, well, in our modern day, it would be employees... Respect and have regard for your employer. Watch this here. So you got warfare in the church, warfare at home, warfare in the workplace. Here we go. Servants be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, mm -hmm. with fear and trembling, mm -hmm. in singleness of your heart, yeah. as unto Christ. Yeah. Uh -huh. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God, from the heart. Yeah, okay, keep going. With all goodwill doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Okay, so whatever you do, even if you're working on your job, you're working on your job, uh, you might be working for Chrysler, uh, but your bank, your check is being signed from glory. You are the signature of God in the workplace. So stop spazzing out, tripping out on the job. Understand that you're God's representative in the workplace. Okay, here we go. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord. So if you work for the witch God, not being a man pleases, you don't do it unto man, but do it unto God. God says your reward is going to come from him and not the workplace. Although I want my, my do right from the workplace. Don't, don't, go, don't get crazy in here now. Good. All right, here we go. The same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And ye masters. Yeah. Do the same things unto them. And he says, you who are the employers have some respect and regard for the people who are under you. Here we go. Forbearing, threatening. Yeah. Knowing that your master. Stop always threatening them and holding the job in front of them. If you don't do this, I'm going to fire you and throw you out. Stop that. Here we go. Knowing that your master also is in heaven. Yeah. Neither is there respect of persons with him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Finally, my brethren. Then he says, finally, my brethren. Be strong in the Lord. We all know this, right? Be strong in the Lord, the, power, the power of his, his might. Put on the whole armor of God, God that ye may be what? Able, able to, to stand, stand against what? The wiles of the devil. The wiles of one translation said the strategies of the devil. For we wrestle, wrestle not, not against, against flesh, flesh and, and blood. blood. But against, against principalities, principalities, that's one. Against power. That's two. Against the rulers of the darkness that's of this three. world. That's uh three. -huh. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay, this is a good place for you to write. We're fighting against four divisions of Satan's armed forces. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Let's, let's discuss that. Principalities, principles, princes in their palaces, legalistical territorial demons that have the right to bind you in a certain area of your life due to an iniquitous spirit or a generational curse. In other words, 
There's in your genealogy, in your bloodline, there's things that are in the DNA of your bloodline that jumped over one generation and fell in the generation that you was born in. So you're actually born with some stuff that Satan leans on because he has the right to bind you until that thing is cast down first and then cast out later. Somebody say cast down and then cast out. Cast down means that you, you're managing it. Cast out, you ain't got no problem with it no more. Good? All right. That, that, all right, so uh, princes in their palaces. Say it. Princes in their palaces. These are, these are demonic forces. The next one is powers. Powers speak to the armed forces of Satan. Like in the United States of America, we have the, the, uh, the Air Force, we have the Navy, we have the Army, the Marines, we have the, the right... Uh, Satan has demons, fallen angels, evil spirits. Say it. Demons, fallen angels, evil spirits. Demons, da. Demons are disembodied spirits. Demons are the spirits from the first earth that existed before Adam and Eve came, was born or came into existence. Now, some of you say, what in the world is Bishop George Bloomer talking about? The Bible tells us in the book of Peter, this they're willingly ignorant of, that the worlds of old stood in the water, out of the water, therefore being overflowed by water, it perished. It's talking about Satan's flood. Satan's flood is recorded to us in Genesis chapter number one. In Genesis chapter one, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It's perfect. Jeremiah says, behold, the Lord created the heavens and the earth, and he made it not a waste place. So verse number one and verse number two in Genesis does not go together. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Perfect. Verse number two, something catastrophic took place, and the earth is without form and void. In other words, canceled. Form and void and darkness is upon the face of the deep. But the Spirit of the Lord moves upon the face of the water. Then God shows up with the chorus of creation in verse number three, and God said. Verse number three, God says. Verse number six, God says. Verse number nine, God says. Verse number 11, God says. 18, God says. Verse number 26, and God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the beast of the field, and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the face of the earth. And the Bible declares, so God created male and female, created he them. He did not make man first and then come back and make woman. He made woman and man at the very same time, but brought them into existence at different times. You don't believe that. That's what the scripture says. He says, so God created male and female, created he them. 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 Now, there's two words that is used. One word is called asha. The other one is called bara. These are Hebrew words. Asha means to make something out of nothing. Bara means to make something out of something. So when God said, and God said, let us make man, out of God, out of nothing, man was formed. And once man was formed, out of nothing, God took the nothing that man was made out of and went down on the ground and took something and made a form and blew man into the nostrils of the form and the form stood up. He created male and female at the same time, created he them. But he blew into the nostrils of Adam, male and female at the same time. So male manifests, but it wasn't to Adam says, I got this feeling, but I don't know what this feeling is. And the Lord said to him, it's not good for man to be alone. He <laughs> he. I will create a help me for him. When God was looking for a wife or mate for Adam, he did not parade a harem of women in front of Adam. He said, Adam, do me a favor, go and name the animals. Adam names all of the animals, and when Adam comes back, the Bible says, and thus all of the creatures was named by Adam, but there was still found no suitable mate. That word suitor means wife or companion. When God was looking for a wife for Adam, he sent Adam into the animal kingdom. And whatsoever Adam would call a thing, that would become the function. So if Adam said elephant, men be running around chasing elephant. The Adam in your life may have said dog. Because there's a whole lot of men running around chasing. <laughs> that was just a little joke. But anyway, y'all slow. <laughs> so he puts Adam into a sleep, deep sleep, 
and he makes an incision on Adam's side, goes in and pulls out a rib, and then does what? Forms the woman. So when God breathed into Adam, now this is going to be the last time that this is going to happen. When he pulls Eve out of Adam, every Adam through all eternity is going to have to come out of Eve. There'll never be another Eve that will come out of an Adam. But all the Adams will come out of Eve. I know you don't get it. You're going to be driving home and say, oh, it's going to happen to you. There is nowhere in Scripture where the Bible says that a woman is a weaker vessel, although it is the cardinal text that is taught in pulpits all over the globe. The Bible says that after Eve, Bishop was created in the image and the likeness of God, God pulled Adam over on the side and he said, let me share something with you. Everything that's in you, she knows about. I'm going to do it one more time. Everything that is in you, she knows about. So treat her as a weaker vessel. But don't be dumb enough to think that she is. Okay, so um, I got into that because of our second principle, uh, powers, demons. There was a world that existed before Adam and Eve came into existence. There are 70 scriptures in the Bible that clarifies this. One of the strongest ones is, and the Lord said unto Adam and Eve, be fruitful multiply, replenish. You can't replenish anything that hadn't first been plenished. Demons are the spirits of that world. Ezekiel 28, 13 uh, says, Lucifer, it said, thou has been in Eden, the garden of God, every precious stone was thy covering. And then talks about the birth stones, the sardius, the topaz, the emeralds, the diamond, the kabunko, workmanship of thy taberns and of thy pipes were prepared in thee. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. You walk up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. You were perfect in all your ways until till iniquity was found in thee. Yeah, okay. And so Lucifer's job was to stand on the throne before God and minister to the Lord. And as Lucifer ministered to the Lord, the Lord looked at Lucifer, but Lucifer's covering was things that reflected God. So when God looked at Lucifer, God could never see Lucifer for seeing himself in Lucifer. And when God looks out of heaven, he don't want to see you. He wants to see himself in you. And anytime God doesn't see himself in you, it's because you have a problem with him. Are we still good together, right? Okay. And so he's looking at God, and, and, and he's a reflection. It's re- he reflects God. He reflects God. God hangs out with people that reflect him. He does. He hangs out. The height of arrogance is God. The height, you, the height of arrogance is God. The height of jealousy is God. The height of defiance is God. And when he talks about himself, he, he does not hold back. He says stuff like, who is likened unto me? Beside me, there is none other. And so here we have it. Um, can, can I veer for just a quick second? Uh, that was a question, y'all. Okay, good. Don't forget to carry me back to the second principle on the, 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 the demon, uh, the, the powers, right? But I want to say this. Lucifer stands on the throne before God. There's a, there's a serious difference between Lucifer... And Satan. Lucifer is a creation of God. Satan is a creation of arrogance, disobedience, and defiance. So all pastors are dealing with their Lucifer Satan. 
Every one of you pastors in this church understand that principle. You are dealing with your Lucifer Satan. You're dealing with the one that you gave authority and power to stand on your platform and to minister. And you have to watch and make sure that the creation that they move around does not sell them the woof ticket of being you. That's where church splits come from. That's where all this comes from. That's where all, all this comes from. That's, that's, that's that whole thing. It's the, it's, it's, it's the Luciferian spirit versus the Satan. Okay. So one day Lucifer's walking up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. He's in, he's in the earth. And he goes back up to heaven and he goes to God. And God is sitting on the throne and God is looking at Lucifer. And God says, okay, Lucifer, what? what What's, what's the problem? And Lucifer says, well, there's no problem. God said, he said, well, why do you say it's a problem? He said, because you're not glowing like you used to glow. Every leader must understand amongst our leaders, there's a countenance that changes before the conflict starts in our ministry. Everybody shout this word and say form, 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 right? And so uh, Lucifer says, okay, well, okay, uh, yeah, there's a little problem. Uh, I just want to ask you this question, God, if I can. Lucifer says, Bishop, what gives you the right to be God? He says that to God. And God said, whoa, yeah, what do you mean? And God said, what gives me the right to be God is because I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm God. I created everything. He, Lucifer said, well, what gives you the right to be God? God says to Lucifer, come on out here. Come on, let's, let's, let's walk together. Come on out. Him and Lucifer goes out there. And God shows him oxygen. He shows him the chambers of wind. He shows him how water is generated. He shows him his huge refrigerators where he makes snow from. He shows him everglazes. He shows him all of that. He shows him light and morning and times and seasons. He shows him all of that. And he said, you see all this? And Lucifer said, yes. And by one wave of God's hand, all of it is gone. Lucifer and God is standing in absolute nothing. Darkness, black, nothing. Everything is gone. God turns to Lucifer and says, now put back what I just took. Lucifer can't do it. God puts it back. He said, that's what gives me the right to be God. Every leader of every church, God places something in them that no one in that ministry can do. No one. No one. I don't care how big-headed they get. No one can do what you do. Care how much education you got, what school you went to, or you set up under A. A. Allen, and you was with Apostle Johnny Washington and a Toro Skinner. What? It ain't got nothing to do. That's it. Yeah. Okay. But Lucifer's not satisfied. So Lucifer says, "Wow, that was big, but still, I get the get. But what gives you the right to be God?" So God says to Lucifer, "You don't understand it. So what I'm going to do." You see the earth that you're going up and down in? Look at it right now. Water is covering the entire globe. All of the creation that's in the earth is coming to naught. This they are willingly ignorant of, that the worlds of old stood in the water, out of the water, therefore being overflowed by water, did perish. Remember this, that the earth, when God came to recreate it, the entire globe was underwater. The sky was underwater. Yes, Everything was underwater. The first four days of creation took place underwater. When God said, let there be light, that was underwater. When God created the animals, that was underwater. It wasn't until the fourth day that God made a ferment in the midst of the waters and took the ferment and called the ferment sky and then put a light to govern the day and a light to govern the night. The first four days of creation is underwater. And anything living or with life has what in it? Water. born of the water, of the spirit, of the blood. And the whole earth is now gone. And Lucifer, and the Lord says to Lucifer, he says, hey, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to recreate the earth. And I'm going to put mankind back in the earth. And I'm going to let man answer the question, who has the right to be God? Who has the right to be God? You ask me that question? The people who told you that you was good enough to be God, I destroyed them. Now we're going to create a whole new breed. 
and let them answer the question, who has the right to be God? So Adam and Eve comes on the scene. They're all their children. And he says, and Lucifer, since I know you're going to lose, I'm going to give you a head start. Every person that will be born will automatically be born yours. I'll have the task of going down and changing them from unrighteous to righteous. And if I can do that, let the question be answered, who has the right to be God? This is, what the whole, this is what the whole job of salvation is all about. The, the, the job is about, self, the, 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 it's, 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 it's about Satan saying, saying in Isaiah 14, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the side of the north. I will be as the hope, like the most high God. And in Ezekiel 28, God said, I will cast you to the ground. Everything Lucifer said he would do, God said you will not do it in Ezekiel 13. That's 28. He challenges God and God comes back and says, I ain't afraid of you. I ain't scared of you. I'm going to fix this thing for you. So what God did, he said, I'm going to create the earth. But this time I'm going to create it with a caveat. God is sitting on the throne. And when the earth is made brand new, Lucifer says, okay, I ain't going to live up here. So Lucifer leaves with one third of the host of heaven. Where did he get the one third of the host of heaven from? He got it from God. The heavens was divided into three. You had Lucifer, you had Gabriel, you had Michael. Lucifer, Gabriel, and Michael. You had those three. Lucifer was the worshiping. Gabriel was the message. Michael was the prayer and warfare. Anytime you have church, somebody's going to worship. Somebody going to bring the word. Somebody going to pray and destroy the yokes. What Satan wants to do, he wants to pervert the music change the message and stop the prayer if he can do that he wins again are you with me here so in the heavenly sphere in the realm of heaven god comes down and he begins to create the earth and this is what he says man of god he says and god said let there be light and there was light god saw that the light was good now, our sister over there, she said, if she's going to deal with spiritual warfare, she's going to use John 1 and 1. In Genesis 1 and 1, 1, and, 1 and 2 and 3, uh, Moses says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, John says, nah, that's not so. In the beginning was the word. So it seems like there's a conflict with, 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 with the text. The, the, the issue is, is that Moses understood something that John did not understand, and John understood something that Moses did not understand. In the beginning was the word. And the God came down and he says, uh, uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, let there be light. And uh, there was light. And God divided the light from the darkness. The light he called day, the darkness he called night. Remember, this is going on underwater. And there is no sun. There is no stars. There's no galaxy. There's nothing. That does not create it to the fourth day. Yet God is speaking these things. So when God said, let there be light, he wasn't talking about solar light or light in the solar system. He was calling Jesus into the world from the foundation of the world. This is the reason why John says, in him was life and his life was the light of the world that shine where? In darkness. And God said, let there be light. And the darkness comprehended it not. Those are the two texts. But something else God said. He looked and he says, and the evening and the morning is the first day. While he's creating, recreating the earth, every time he creates something, when he puts it in place, he stops long enough to says, and the evening and the morning, and the evening and the morning. Now, God is awesome. He's the creator. He's the only one that creates the day of the day before. So when you get to the, when you get to the day of, you're not surprised because you did it the day before. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Right? I ain't trying to play with you. I'm telling you the truth. This, this, this is how God functions, that God works. And this is the reason why those of you who sit up under great leadership can never outsmart the leader. Because the day of was created the day before. So while you're getting ready to go someplace, they're feeling agitated in their spirit. And they're saying, you know, uh, Brother Cheese ain't doing right by Sister Macaroni anymore. Something... You know what I'm talking about. Something just ain't right. The day before. Then when the day of it happens, you're like, oh my God, I was just. What God was doing, he says, and the evening and the morning, and the evening and the morning, and even the morning. Satan is up in heaven watching this earth be recreated. He wants to get back into the realm of the earth to do what he did to cause the earth to be in this chaotic state in the first place. And so God said, the evening and the morning, even the morning, even the morning. 
when the whole earth is created, God goes back up to heaven and he sits Brown on the throne. And Lucifer comes and stands next to him. And Lucifer said, well, you know, I'm, 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 I'm about to, I'm, 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 I'm getting up out of here. God says, fine. Lucifer makes his way out of heaven. God gets off the throne and God goes to eternity, pulls eternity up on one side, pulls eternity up on the other side, and pulls eternity to eternity and traps Lucifer in time. Lucifer, who used to be an eternal creature, is now a being of time. The Bible declares that he comes down with great wrath because he has a short time. When Jesus shows up and meets up with Lucifer in the earth, Lucifer always turns around and says, have you come to torment us before our He's a creature of time. And you're dealing with him just like he is an eternal being. He ain't no eternal being. Guess what? You are an eternal being. Are you with me here? So God's whole purpose for recreating the earth to bring Adam and Eve into existence was to deal with the anarchy and the problems that he was having in heaven. Because when Lucifer went up to heaven from the first earth with the iniquity that he had on the inside of him, God could not get it out of heaven because in heaven it's eternity. And whatever happens in eternity happens for how long? Forever. So God had to figure out how to get what? Iniquity that was in heaven forever out of heaven. How do you get it out? You get it out by creating time. So Revelation chapter number 6 says when they opened up a seal, there was a great noise in heaven for about the space of a half an hour. A half an hour was time. So time is now in heaven. God needed enough time to get that sucker out. And I come to tell you, I come to tell you, everything that's bothering you, everything that is troubling you, everything that is coming against you, every trick of the enemy who has fought you, time is on my side. Yes, it is. (laughs) Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. Okay, so Satan's armed forces. Everybody say Satan's armed forces. Satan's armed forces, Satan's armed forces is uh, demons, fallen angels, evil spirits. Demons are the disembodied spirits of, from the uh, of pre-Adamic society, pre-Adamic earth. Fallen angels, one-third of the host of angels that fell with Lucifer. The Bible said his tail drew one-third. Now, people tell you that Satan tried to take over heaven. That is an erroneous doctrine. It's not true, and the Bible does not suggest it. The Bible is clear on what Lucifer did. Lucifer was not trying to take over heaven. Lucifer was trying to build his kingdom above God's kingdom and put God at his feet. One more time. He said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. He wasn't trying to take over God's kingdom. He was trying to go above God and make God his servant. He he, he wasn't happy just putting God out. He wanted God to serve him. Mm, 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 mm. One third. So those, those, those are those angels. Now, understand this. The world has a lot of problems with demons. The church has a lot of problems with fallen angels. The church has its problems with fallen angels. The world has its problem with demons. And so tomorrow when we start talking about tarot cards and, and, and witches and warlocks, those are, those are demonic, uh, occultic things. Uh, spiritual warfare deals with those of us who are dealing with familiar spirits and doctrines of devils that lodges itself in the church to take the place of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Are you with me here? Good. Uh, So that's for now the last one is evil spirits. Everybody say evil spirit. Evil Evil spirits is the physical human individual who's got a nasty attitude. Ask your neighbor's question, do you have a nasty attitude? They tell you right there, no, I don't. Well, you've had one at one time in your life. It's when the human spirit, watch this, gets wounded or bruised, can't forgive, and holds everybody accountable for it. So in the description of the ministry of Jesus, he said he came to heal those who were bruised. That's evil spirits. Because some things people do to you, if God doesn't heal you, 
I mean, we need to get to get Okay. Powers. Rulers of the darkness of this world. Speaks of witches and warlocks. But it also speaks of pronosticators. And the problem that we're having in the Christian church today is we have far many more pronosticators than we have prophets who are disguising themselves as prophets, but they're prognosticators. Okay, they're, pro- pro- they're, they're, they're prognosticators. These are individuals who understand the times and uh, uh, um, the, um, the, I don't want to, the times and the waves of, 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 of the universe. And they know how to call it into place so it almost seems like it's God when it's really, really not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Uh, uh, let me make this plain. It's called consulting with witches. Okay? And a lot of the prophets are into that right now. And you're going to see a lot of those things uh, unfold in the, in, 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 in the body of Christ. Grave sucking, where you go to the graves of of. of great men and women of God and lay on their grave or sit in front of their grave and, and meditate there and draw from, 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 the, from, from, from the grave. Uh, 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 um, the hijacking of mantles. Uh, to, to, to say the name of it, uh, mantle hijacking. Say it. Yeah. Now, let me explain something to you about this. This is, this is important. Can I talk like this, Pastor? This is, let me explain something to you about this. A mimicked anointing will bring you the same results as an authentic anointing. One more time. A mimic anointing. Listen, if you got a dollar, well, you got $10 and it's yours, will it spend? If you steal my $10, will it spend? Spend. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just because the gift is illegitimate doesn't mean it doesn't work. Ah, Bishop, the devil is a lie. Well, then what do we do with the scripture? Haven't I cast out devils in your name? Didn't I speak with tongues? Didn't I lay hands on the sick and they did recover? And they said, depart from me. You work of iniquity. I never knew you. But all the things that you did, not knowing me, people got great results from. If I listen to a message that is preached and the message is preached well and I have a good memory and I know how to and I memorize the message and I watch your posture and I know your pauses and I know how to release it in timing, I can leave this meeting, go to another meeting and the results you got in this meeting, I can get that same results over there. I don't, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know if you understand this or not. And I'm not just saying that because I'm in your church and in your house tonight. What God has done over the past 10 years, he's recreated brand new expressions of the anointing. And the reason why he did it was because the ministers that were coming up began to mimic the anointings that was on others' lives. So why should I get you to come to my conference to act like Juanita? If I know Juanita, I can go get Juanita myself. Why do I need you to act like Jake's? If I know Jake's, I can get you. you find, so they begin to mimic different. So what God has done, he's popped open different things. So, so don't nobody say that you like nobody. Don't nobody say that. No, 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 don't, 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 don't nobody say that you like nobody. Nobody don't say that. But I know a whole bunch of them out there. That people say, you know, that's just like, or they just like. There's, and, 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 and I'm not saying this in a negative sense. So don't milk me, y'all. But the, 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 the point that I'm making is that ever so often God releases an authentic anointing that has to go through the process of ridicule because everyone is so used to the norm. So he breaks in that particular area in order to attract the new move of God. Yeah, there's simil- similarities. We all come from some, someone. We, we're impressed by someone somewhere. Okay? And so the spending of time with demonic forces disguised as angelic forces and us not having the type of relationship with God that we're supposed to have, the Bible says if it's possible, it would deceive the very elect. 
we've all been duped by some spirit at some point or some time. So well, I have been, you know, that, 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 that's it. But a mimic anointing can bring the same results as an authentic anointing if the person knows how to read the room. The last one of Satan's armed forces is spiritual wickedness in high places. Preachers who preach against God in the name of God. So now there's this huge movement of universalism that is all in the world. Uh, hybrid grace. Uh, people who preach to us for years and years and years about salvation, about God, about tithing has changed their, 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 their message. They're actually telling you that God is offended if you repent because you don't have to repent, uh, because the grace has already done it for you. Listen to me. You have to repent. Ain't nothing wrong with repenting. Okay. Um, uh, they against seed, sowing, they against all these types of things. And if you're going online, you've seen I've challenged a few of them and so on and so forth like that. And they change their course for a little while and then they go back to whatever they're going to do. But the, the, the main piece here is uh, that I'm speaking about is if I preached on seed faith for 40 years and my net worth is $750 million and then I say to you, seed worth, seed faith is, is not, not true. Then that means that your product is defected. Give me my money back. <laughs> <laughs> You're worth $750 million. You own condominiums, not, not apartments, the, the whole apartment building you own. And for some reason or another, you've come to this knowledge that what got you here is not going to bless me. So my challenge is, if that's true, buy his remorse. Give me a recall. Give my money back. Dealing with the demonic realm of the spirit, the churches today are running from it because the people who taught us about it made it so nasty, so mystical, and frightened us. There's a difference between a deliverance service, which we're having right now, and an exorcism where we're casting out demons. And most people put both of them together. Okay? A deliverance service, okay, is the changing of a mindset, being set free from certain uh, issues and hangups and thoughts. A exorcism is we go in and pull the demon that's controlling you out of you. But here's the problem. Do you have a demon or does the demon have you? Are you possessed by a demon or are you in possession of a demon? Let's do it one more time. Are you possessed by a demon or are you in possession of a demon? It's because a lot of the saints, the demon don't have them. They have the demon. Let me make it cl cl clear. How many of you got a car? How many of you in here, your car is not paid for yet? Raise your hand. Not paid for yet. Right. So do you have possession of the car? Yes, you do. You may know. If you're driving, then you got possession of the car. So let's do this again with your slow self. <laughs> Make sure school bus, get out of that bus. <laughs> How many of you still uh, owe on your car? Okay. Do you have the car? So you have possession of the car. Who has the title to the car? The bank. So it is possible to have possession of a thing and not ownership. Okay. That's the understanding of how the demonic areas work where Satan will have title to a certain area of your life but still let you drive 
So you driving, but he's got title. You got possession. He's got title. Say it. He's got title. I got possession. Okay. Now, when Jesus cast out demons in the Bible, in Jesus' exorcisms, how did he cast out demons? He cast out demons by interview only. What's your name? What's the name of your child? How long has they been like this? He, got, he carries them. That's what Jesus does. Okay. So let's have this little discussion. Okay. There's a man whose kid is in trouble. He goes to Jesus' disciples. Because pastors, as strong as you are in the pulpit, people believe that your disciples, your members, are you in the marketplace. So what you teach here in this pulpit, they expect for your disciples to be able to manifest it. And that's why your disciples need to have their behinds in the church every time the door opens up because they are representatives of the anointing that is in the pulpit. Jesus talked about it. And he said, you, we, all Jesus said, he said, we know you want a Jesus disciples. You look like him, you talk like them, you manifest like him. Okay, good. They bring this boy to Jesus' disciples, apostle, and they say to him, uh, 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 you know, pray for me. And they pray for the boy, but the boy does not get better. Jesus comes along later on, and he goes to Jesus. He said, Master, I brought my son to your disciples because he was vexed with the spirit for them to cast the spirit out, and they could not. Jesus turns and he says, what's the name of your son? Tell him the name of his son. What does he do? He says, when he sees uh, fire, he runs through the fire. And if he's at a high place, he'll throw himself down. Jesus said unto him, come out of him now, you deaf and dumb spirit. And the boy is set free. Good. He goes to the disciples when he leaves. The disciples come and he says, Master, why couldn't we cast the demon out of this boy? What did he say? That kind goes out by praying and fasting. So here, Pastor, we start a doctrine of prayer and fasting. Because that's not what Jesus is talking about. That kind goeth out but by prayer and fasting. That's what he says. So now they say, well, if you pray and fast, you can cast out demons. You can cast out demons if you ain't praying and fasting. You cast out demons on the authority of the name of Jesus. These signs shall follow them that believe. Good. But what transpired here was Jesus was talking to his disciples, and he says, that kind goeth out but by prayer and fasting. Now, what is the kind that he's referring to? He's referring to the prophetic edge that you need to have if you're going to deal with certain types of spirits. Let me explain to you. When the boy sees fire, he runs through the fire. He's a high place. He thought, so the demon that is in the boy is manifesting like it's a suicide spirit. But when Jesus cast the spirit out of him, he said, come out of him, you deaf and dumb spirit which means that the manifestation of a demon is not always the origin thereof. So you say, Satan, what is your name? And lust, lust will say fear. And fear is cast out so lust can stay in. You have to have a revelation. Are you with me tonight? Okay, so, so, so when we... When we drum up the things, let's bring the buckets and roll them over on the floor and trying to cast the demon out of it. And then you come, come out and the person's like, ah, you're coming out. <laughs> All this kind of stuff and everything like that, that can't be found in scripture. Understand this. If you walk in the authority of the Holy Ghost and a demon manifests, first and foremost, the Bible teaches that at the name of Jesus, the demon submits to the authority. Now, I do recognize that sometimes there's tussles and there's battles and so on and so forth like that. Jesus says straightway, this demon came out that was instantaneously in the same hour. That means it took a little bit of time. And he says many days hence. So some people, they're going to have to go through sessions in order to get free. Some people you have to wallow with on the floor. And others will receive the word and it just comes out right there. They're just done. It's done. That's an exorcism. That's, that's finding the door so that whatever that spirit is on the inside of the individual can make its exit. But rest assured, if that spirit exits, he's going 
to talk to some people so he can get back. So you have to figure out how to close the door so the spirit does not come back. Pastor, I didn't get to anything that I was going to talk about tonight. Just, 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 in, our, in, just in our opening. What attracted those of you who is in this room tonight to this meeting tonight? Talk to yourself. Say, why did you come? Now let me open up the floor. By the raising of your hand. Why did you come when you heard that there was going to be a spiritual warfare conference in Charlotte? Why did you come? Okay, so you came to be able to strengthen yourself and fight. What are you fighting? Principalities. Principalities. What are principalities? Principalities are things that go- try to govern my life. Govern, I'm going to speak on me. Yes. That try to govern my life that are not of God. Right. Why are you calling them principalities? Because I just think that that's how, that's how I perceive it. Right. Um, it could be another form of another doctrine or a, not another doctrine, but it could be another entity. And that's just how he should understand it. Right. Me. So, so if we use, if you're fighting principalities, then you're fighting ancestral spirits in your family. Is that what you're fighting? Some of them are. Some of them are. Okay. Because remember the Disciples could not cast the spirit out of the boy because they didn't have the right information. We just got finished going through that little lesson there. And we talked about how that lust will say it's lie to get lie out so lust can stay. So we have to have a clear understanding as to what we are fighting. And we, in our first part of the lesson, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, princes in their palaces legalistical territorial demons that have a right to bind you through an iniquitous spirit that is a spirit of sin or a generational curse. So when you're talking about principalities, you're talking about family issues and ancestral stuff of witchcraft, incest, those kind of things. Ichabus, spirits fighting you in your sleep and those different types of things. If that's it, now we have a working information on being able to say to the spirit, by the authority that God gives in us, we, we, we command you to come out. Who else? Yes. Take it again. I didn't hear you. I've been dealing with um, visions, dreams, seeing things since I was a, a child. Yeah. And as a child growing up in a church, old-fashioned church or a church of tradition, no one was there to explain to me what I was seeing, what was taunting me in the middle of the night. Um, I could feel things, I could see things, I could, I could have a vision. I, no one was there, so I'm looking for, like you said, intel. I'm looking for information to explain it um, and to explain what are my gifts and what are my purposes. So now that you gave me the breakdown of one, two, three, and four, the principalities, I, I can say I can identify, yes, I have the generational curses, and yes, I, I am dealing with seeing certain demons or dealing with spiritual warfare, but that class is never given to my age group growing up. And now that I'm an adult and I have kids, I want to safeguard them because I know that the gift that I had as a child, it's DNA. Okay, so now, what's the gift that you had as a child? I see death before it comes. You see stuff before it comes? Okay, so, and, and that gift would be what? Death. Huh? Death. You see, say it again. I see, I see people pass before it happens. Before they come. All right. Yes. Yeah. And, and you said that's a gift. I don't know if it's a gift. To me, I don't feel like it's a gift. No, but you, what, no, I'm, I'm just, what you at first said, you said this, the gift that you had would lead me to ask you a question, what was your gift? Yes. And so, but you're saying that you, you see death, things, people dying before, which call? Okay. So it's very, very important for us to understand um, premonitions. Okay. Premonitions. Mm-hmm. I'm going to use another words. Epiphanies. Mm-hmm. 
and deja vus, which are words that are used more in the occult, mm -hmm. but they exist within the, within the church realm. Mm -hmm. A deja vu is your spirit's been in the room, but your body wasn't there. And so when your body gets there, you recognize, but you know that you ain't never been here, but you kind of feel like you, what, 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 what's, what's, what's up with this? Well, you know, that's, that's kind of crazy. And I don't, Bishop talk, Bishop Bloom talking all that voodoo and witchcraft and all kinds of blah, 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 blah. Well, the power of translation is the gift of evangelism. When Philip got finished ministering in the city where the apostles went down and took, got the woman who was bound with the spirit of divination, he doesn't travel to his next place. He's translated there. And he stand in front of an Ethiopian eunuch preparing him for the next group that is coming in order to do the ministry. When I spoke to the pastors standing up here and stuff like that, you were woken, and I said, you're woken up something in me. This, tonight is a translation night. It's, a, it's, 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 it's to prepare me and the army that God is getting ready to raise up against the onslaught of witchcraft that, is in, that has been accepted in the church and the witchcraft that is coming to the church that is going to take the church out if the army doesn't stand up. So um, if your gift was prophetic, then there would have been an answer to the death and the person probably would have not died. So what door to the dimensions or to consciousness or to those epiphanies do we have to close? Because that's not good. So there's certain doors that God gives us the authority to do what? Close those doors. That is not passed down to your children. So where you managed it because there was church, but if it's passed down as a principality to our children, one of your daughters or your sons might turn out to be a shaman or a warlock because the door was never closed. And it was treated as spirituality in God when it wasn't. So we'll be, uh, we'll be talking about who else? Yes. Um, she, you, she, let, let, let her go right. She's right there. She's right there, and then you'll come this way. Thank you. Um, I came tonight because I, by way of New York, by way of Durham, um, I've been to your tent revivals for many, many years. So I came, when I moved to Charlotte, it was totally different. Because a lot of people, a lot of pastors don't want to deal with it. They deliberately say, I'm not praying for that. So tonight, I really came to get ignited. To be ignited. To ignited. Right. Be ignited. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, really, I think I just came for like deliverance in different areas of my life. Uh, really just get back on the right track and path and you know, God just to really kind of correct different things that I've gotten myself into. How old are you? 22. You're 22. Okay. Now, uh, uh, Yo, boy, do it all. We're going somewhere with this 22 there, man. All right, now, you're 22, right? Okay, uh, so uh, four from 22 is how old? 26. And, huh? 26. From 22? From. Oh. 18? 18. Yeah, 18. Right. And four from 18 is what? 14. And four from 14 is what? 10. So three fours ago, you were 10. Three fours ago, you were 10. Okay. What has happened in 12 years of your life that will make you concerned enough to shut doors? Um, well, I mean, when I was like 14 or 15, that's when I was really oppressed. I would say maybe possessed, I'm not too sure. I was oppressed in a lot of areas. That's what kind of pushed me back. Okay, so let's talk about oppression for a minute. Oppressed with what? What, 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 what was this? Like depression, depression. Um, suicidal thoughts, just mm -hmm. a lot of like deep thoughts, like dark thoughts, and it just messed me up when I was like teenager. Well, you were a teenager, right. So now, now, I don't know this about you, and we talked about three fours ago, which is, see, and you do two, on, on top of the 10, or, or four on top of the 10, you said we're about 14 years old, okay. That's how 
the spirit works in terms of spiritual warfare. That kind goeth up by prayer and fasting. Doesn't mean that I need to go fast. It meant because I fasted and because I prayed, the prophetic part of the ministry that is needed in dealing with demons because demons cannot tell the truth even if they wanted to. So anything you ask a demon, he ain't telling you the truth about it because he can't tell the truth. He's a liar. So you have to be able to discern what is going on in order to get the person, to get the person free. So are you depressed now? Not as much. I mean, there are times, but not really. Okay. So let me ask you this question again. Are you depressed now? A yes or no? Yes. Okay. So if you were to use the word not really, not really would be not really yes or not really no. What would your not really be? My not really is it because it depends. I mean, they're most of the time not really because I, I used to be a lot more, but mm -hmm. now it's not really. Okay. It really depends on circumstances. And what's the circumstances that would depress you or make you feel free? Well, freedom really when I'm in church a lot or depression from when I like I do something or I just kind of just willingly just become depressed, at, okay. you know, stuff like that. Okay, so now I'm not a doctor. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a biblicist and I'm a believer in, in Jesus and I studied spirituality. So you're describing to me a principality, a generational existence which means, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says that if your forefather doesn't repent and he dies, the spirits of your forefather comes to visit upon the third and fourth generation. Which means that your great-great-great-grandfather ran up a bill with Lucifer, died, and Lucifer comes to you four generations later to ask you to pay the bill. Once you understand that, you understand that this load that you're carrying is not yours. Now you can step out of it and walk into it because you've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. You've also been regenerated. Regenerated means regened. So the DNA, remember the first part of our text, uh, honor your, uh, obey. So if we're under great leadership and we're obedient to the word that is going forth, those kind of spirits rub off of us without even pouring oil on the head. or whatever. But now watch this here. Watch this here. If I, have a, if I have a personal consecration and the personal consecration that I have doesn't line up with the pure word of God, it creates a legalism. Got that? So you have John the Baptist who wore camel skin and ate uh, locusts and wild honey and lived in Wichita. So when he saw people come around him that wasn't dressed like him, he called them vipers because his personal consecration didn't line up with scripture, but it became his doctrine. So we see certain people look a certain way. The genes might be got up. They might have a tattoo. They whatever, whatever, whatever. Ain't no way in the world the Holy Ghost is going to, because see, your personal consecration doesn't line up with the pure word of God and you're making people follow. Now, if you were taught this and you taught this and you taught this and you taught this, even when you see the pure word of God, the pure word of God is not strong enough to loose you from a teaching that you heard down through the years. Faith cometh by hearing. hearing. If you pull that mole on that neck, what's going to happen? Somebody say you're going to bleed to death. No, you ain't going to bleed to death. It ain't connected to no, to no main artery. But we heard that so many times that it becomes a a truth to us that has no truth in it. Sometimes it won't even bleed. Sometimes it falls off. You'll be looking for it and say, oh, where my mole go? <laughs> okay, uh, who's next? You came tonight. Yes. I came tonight to get the intel. I came tonight to get the intel. Um, I know I've been delivered for some things in my life, and I know that um, as I'm in church, at my church, I see folks that need deliverance. Mm -hmm. So I came to get the intel. Okay. And uh, 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 when you hear the word intel, what comes to your mind? 
Inside information. Inside information. Very good. Uh, the intel that that I'm talking about is angels that stand ready to give you information that they know that you can't know in a situation to get you out of something. Um, Israel is in a battle right now, right? In the war. Because their intel failed. Okay. They have the Iron Dome and two hours had gone by where the party was going on and the people that were standing at but it didn't just fail there. What happened is this. In the Spanian War, they went to the general and they said to him, how are you going to get in to Spain to win? He says, we have an infantry coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. So we're going to close in on them all four ways. And then he turned and he says, and we have a fifth one. The fifth one is inside. Satan rarely destroys us from the four corners. Most times he does it what? Inside. Inside. So the intel makes us aware of the strange thing that is happening to us right now. I was, um, I was in New Jersey and I was preaching at a church that uh, your pastor was, was, was at. And... Uh, at, at some point in the some point in the message, uh, I saw her and spoke something to her that she was just different. That was wiped out of my mind, wiped out of my head when I when I met her again. In fact, when I was talking to her, I didn't even know who I was talking to her. It was, it was the, the God formed this. But here's my problem. When she told me who she was, she said, remember you came up and you came to the church that we was at and I was standing in white and blah, 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 and you stayed up special. So when I right finished talking to her, I called the pastor of the church and I said to him, I said, Doc, you missed this one. Why did I say that to him? Because chances are, if you missed that one, how many others did you miss? This thing was in your basket and you couldn't see it because demonic forces through forms shows up and makes us uncomfortable with what's next. And we have to keep Brown in place what's now to prevent what's next from coming. And so when I meet up with people who are next and they say, well, introduce me to such and such a person. But I say, hey, okay, I'll do that and stuff like that. But a lot of times I'm reluctant because I know, I know that though we revere them, we love them and they were anointed and the power of God is on them so on and so forth like that. We're next. The new voices are not new vessels. There's going to be a lot of people who you didn't hear from a while, they're bouncing right back because God could trust the vessel. Remember I talk about the authentic anointing and the mimic anointing. He can trust the vessel and it's about that. It's about the vessel. So now he places a new voice in an old vessel I had to come here tonight we had, 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 to, had to come here uh, uh, together and the sister back there I believe she was over there she says they don't deal with this kind of stuff in the Charlotte area and so on and so like that and that was the word you spoke to me you said that, you know what, that, 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 what was God doing thank God for a John the Baptist for a George Bloomer someone to run and prepare the way to get us to the place a breakthrough and, and, and deliverance. And someone called me and said, you know what? We're going to the meeting and it's going to be jam-packed tonight. And I said, no, it ain't. So said, yes, it's going to be. I said, no, no, it's not. Well, Bishop, don't, 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 don't say that. They want me to do wishful thinking. No, no, no. 
I know that the room is going to be filled tonight with people who are gifted, anointed, challenged, and not afraid. Then they hear what transpired. Then the other group comes and says, okay, it's safe because I don't want this demon that's in me. <laughs> to be all up in there manifesting. All of a sudden, none of the praise team we can get them, can't find us, just can't get nobody. Now, if we was having a regular conference, fine. When we're going to talk about stuff like this, that's a serious thing. I'll take two more questions, and then tomorrow we're going to go into some serious uh, stuff. Yes, I'm sorry. I, I do. Yes. Um, I, I do my thing, and we have dialogues. And one of the questions that was posed, and I did answer it, um, but I, wanna, I want you to address it. Um, a lot of times during warfare, you, you, you see more women who are possessed than men. And this question Amen. was asked several times. And I know that we are receivers. Mm -hmm. And so the great words of Miles Monroe's, if you give a woman a seed, she gives you a baby. You give her hell, she'll give you hell. And so I want you to address this because a lot of times you do, even in, in, in movies, it's always the woman. You know, in the Bible, biblically, there were men. Um, but I want you to address that, especially where single women are concerned because they're out and they're dating and they're connecting with people. And so when you deal with incubus, of course, you'll probably touch upon that. But kind of address that for the women who are in the room and those that are online that um, this demonic um, connection happens, it's, it appears more so with women than men, and why? Um, now, um, the, the Apostle Paul puts it this way. He says, there's, there's certain things that um, when he speaks, it's the Lord. And then he says, but not the Lord, but I say. So he's, he's, he's asking uh, for permission to state his experiences that he's had with the doctrine or the question that is placed before him. And then after he states his, he goes back and says, but the Lord says this. So we know what part is God and what part is Paul. And I want to answer the question like that, the part that is God and then the part that is uh, uh, George Bloomer. Um, spiritual warfare started in the Garden of Eden. Of every tree in the garden you may eat, but the tree in the midst of the garden you may not eat of that tree. For the day you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. The tree of knowledge of good and of evil is in the middle of the garden, the midst of the garden. And so in order to get to it, you got to go through the whole garden in order to get to it. But there's another tree there too. The Bible says, and the tree of life is there. So when you get there, you, gotta make, you, you have to make a choice. Life and death is in the power of consumption. You get it? So Eve is in the garden, and in verse number three, now the serpent is more subtile than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord God had created, and the serpent comes down into the garden. But we teach that the serpent is a snake. That's the, what's the name of the serpent? The, Anash in the Hebrew. The serpent is an interloper. It is a form. It is an alien. It is a force that comes from outside of the garden into the garden and it takes on the embodiment that Eve can relate to. Probably the form of a man standing next to her. The discussion, this is Bible now and then I'm going to give you my opinion on something. The discussion that Eve and the serpent has is sensually sexual. And when God deals with them, he deals with them that way. The serpent says, you can't eat of the fruit and the trees of the garden. She said, nay, we can eat of all the trees in the garden, but the tree in the midst of the garden, we can eat of the tree. For the day we eat of that tree or touch it, we shall surely die. This devil knows that God never said anything to Adam about touch it. So Adam told Eve something that God never told him. So Eve is now warring with the serpent, with Anash. She's warring with the serpent 
without the proper information. She's got legalisms. Eve is standing there with a prayer dolly on her head and she don't supposed to have one on her head because he gave her something that he believed that was going to make her holy because he didn't believe that what God said to him that could keep him would be strong enough to keep her. So he told her not to touch it. God never said anything about touching it because it would be God's plan for them to eat of it when God got ready because the tree of the knowledge of good and of evil was God's tithe. Every tree you can have, but the only tree in the garden is mine. You can eat of the tree of life, but don't touch the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You eat of that tree, you shall surely die. She eats of the tree, nothing happens. She gives it to her husband. Their eyes, both of their eyes are open. God comes. He hears God walking in the cool of the evening. The Lord says to him, Adam, where art thou? God is not asking him his location. God is asking him his mindset. He wants to hear what Adam says. He says, you know, I was afraid. I'm over here because I was naked. God said, who told you was naked? There's a whole level of, 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 of intimacy that is revealed. Who told you was naked? Have you been eating of the tree in the midst of the garden I told you not to eat of? Because God knew that that would produce a nakedness that would bring shame. Because Adam and Eve was already naked when he made them. He said they was both naked and they weren't ashamed of it. So now he's talking about the nakedness that he didn't talk about before because this nakedness brings about a shame. This nakedness is the type of nakedness where you and your husband can walk around the house naked all day long. But if somebody come in that room, because yeah, they don't belong in that intimacy. So now the serpent had entered into the intimacy of Adam and Eve. Okay. Now what was Satan's plan? Satan's plan was to create a nation out of Eve, to impregnate Eve and create a nation out of Eve, and he failed in Genesis chapter number 3. But he succeeded in Genesis chapter number 6. The angels that kept not their first estate came down, married the daughters of men, and produced giants in the land. He wanted to do it in, in, the, in the garden. He couldn't pull it off in the garden, so he waited and he came back. The devil is always coming back to what he tried to pull off. Okay, now remember this. So, Eve is more susceptible to spirits than Adam. That's scripturally. Now, the question that you, that, that you uh, brought to me is... The reason why I've seen, or I believe that we see more manifestations of demons coming out of women than out of men is because women are connected to God in a way that they refuse to hold those evil spirits. Men will carry them. Men will carry them. They will, they will carry them. So, scripture and opinion. I, you know. <laughs> Question. Yes. So, you have the, uh, let, 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 let me throw this in here. You know, um, um, every now and then you meet up with a man. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble on this. Oh, I'm gonna, I, yeah, I am. Every now and then you meet up with a man who can pray equal like a woman. Every now and then. Every now and then. And sometimes, here's what I'm going to get in trouble. No, I'll leave it alone. <laughs> and when you meet up with a lot of them that is equal to a woman in her travail and her prayer life, it's the woman in him that's praying out of it. It's the, it's, it's, it's the, it's the, it's the, the sensitive part of him that's praying. Women, you, where in the Bible does this call forth the travailing men? You need to call forth the mighty men of valor. Men win their battles by swinging, women win their battles by travailing. Question. Please, y'all don't get me in trouble on that one. But it's real. Yeah. I came to this conference because I have been suffering 
um, attacks from my childhood. And I noticed in my family generations um, through my grandparents, there was like a spirit of abuse. My grandmothers had tolerated abuse from my granddaddies until the day that God called them home. I'm the oldest grandchild on my father and my mother's side because my mom and dad is their parents' oldest. And when, I, when they got married, my mother and father had me. And all throughout my life, I always seen things before it happened, uh, would deal with certain things, but the attacks on my life always was very loaded. My grandmother understood when I would come to her about things because she also was a seer. And her, grand, her father, which was my great granddaddy, was a man of God as well. But I noticed that that spirit had hit my life with the abuse. I've dealt with it in my household with my relatives, my mom and father had separated and got divorced. And then I would still watch my granddaddy on my mama's side and my granddaddy on my uh, father's side treat my grandmothers like they was nothing. And they were great women of God. But in my life, it came down a road that I started to deal with the same thing. And I identified what it was. The spirit that was attacking them also hit me. In my first marriage, I dealt with so much abuse and I suffered in silence. I'm a victim of domestic violence and I am a survivor of it. But my family don't want me to talk about it. And in ministry, I've dealt with abuse too. As a leader, I would get mocked, laughed at, and the attacks are severe. Even right now, I came to this conference because I've been delivered from a lot of things, but I also wanted God to just restore my life because there are things that I'm noticing that is happening right now. And I shared it with um, a few friends, and a lot of them can't take it. And just dealing with certain things, and I know that those demons by name, I know what they do, but there's other parts of things that... Um, okay, let me say something to you. I'm going to say something to you, right? I want you, tell, me, tell me your name. Yolanda. Yolanda, okay. Let me tell you something. Hear me now. The situation of the circumstance is the circumstance that was situated when the situation was circumstantial. What did I say to you? The situation of the circumstance was the circumstance that was situated. Yeah, but what did I say to you? The situation? No. So I'm going to do it again. The situation of the circumstance is the circumstantial situation that was situated when the circumstance got situated. What did I say to you? What did I say to you? The situation of the no. circumstance. What I said to you was nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. When you're talking, you're talking, you're, that's how you talk. You're talking and you're not saying anything. Uh, I was attacked. But, 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 so remember, when the powers of darkness is revealed, it's got to flee the place. If Satan can block your articulation, he can keep you bound. So, I'm hearing what you're saying, but I don't know where to start because you're not saying anything at the same time you're, you're saying. So, imagine being in a relationship or in a marriage and one partner is talking, the other partner says, well, see, but you don't understand because the things I'm going through, if I have to tell you the thing, things, the thing, 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 eventually nothing is being said. And frustration is still building because you're looking for an answer that can't be answered because nothing is being said. So you said you dealt with abuse, right, in your marriage. And then you dealt with abuse, even in ministry. And then it said so hard, it was just difficult. Stuff like that. What can you say that can release the angels to get you the comfort that you need out of the pressure that you're under. Now, here's what I'm going to say. Because anybody who is attacked, shown off attacked, is never attacked for themselves. They're always attacked for the betterment of ministry and others. 
That's where it comes from. A testimony is an undeniable experience that we've had with God in the past Mm -hmm. to sustain us for present or futuristical difficulties. It's data to bring someone else out. But he uses us to bring them out. Okay, so take one half of a minute and explain what's your attack. What's the demon that's fighting you? And how can we help you to get free? Confusion. Confusion. Okay. Confusion about what? Different things that is occurring at the moment. Like? Past tense things. Excuse me? Past tense things. Okay, Okay. so... You're back to the situation of the circumstantial situation. There'll be no healing or breakthrough for you until you can say what it is. That, that's where the breakthrough comes at. Now, guess what we just experienced? A deliverance service. But most saints don't know that because they've been exposed to exorcisms, the buckets. And there's a few of you in here that need buckets. I've needed buckets in my life. But but do do, do you follow what I'm saying? It's a difference between a deliverance service. And so what are you holding on to that you would not allow the deliverance to come forth? So let's try it one more time. Holding on to guilt from others saying that I've done things that I didn't do. Like what? The pain that was caused from some things that they inflicted on me, but I walked away from it. The circumstance of the situation is the situational circumstance. And when you get to the place, remember what Jesus said. What is your problem? Well, he runs through the fire. From a high place, he throws himself down. She got an issue of blood. She's continuously bent over. He has a withered hand. (laughs) He's been at the pool of Bethesda. Deliverance comes when you have the interview. The interview reveals whether the demonic force has the right or the time to stay there. That's what happens there. Who's our last one for tonight? Pastor. Huh? She said, try one more time. Huh? Try one more time. Okay, give it a mic one more time. <laughs> yes. Are you in ministry? Not at the moment. Okay, let me ask you this question. Are you in ministry? Yes. Okay, and what do you do in ministry? Multiple Multiple things. I preach. You preach. Okay. And what do you preach? Jesus Christ. Okay. What, what does that mean? I preach salvation. What does that mean? Freedom. What does that mean? Deliverance. Excuse me? Deliverance. What does that mean? Freedom. Okay. What happens to a room? You're teaching right now. When you said what you said, you taught. When you said what you said back then, you taught. Anytime you make a statement, you're teaching. And if there's spirits in the room or spirits in the house or spirits that are around, the spirits are looking for host to host the next move that is against the establishment. Okay. Donald Trump announced two years before the election went on 
that the election was going to be stolen. So he had two years to tell. Nobody even pulled the lever yet. And it, because faith coming by hearing, by hearing, by hearing, right. If you're called to preach, you preach what? My, I'm, I'm, I'm deliverance. Uh, um, some people say, my ministry is more spiritual warfare. I had to make it clear the difference between spiritual warfare and deliverance. You ask the average preacher, what you preach? I just preach God's word. Good luck with that. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a lot. So it's, 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 it's a whole lot. So you've had challenges in ministry. If you've been challenged in your ministry and you've been attacked, what were the attacks like? Now remember, I'm talking to you on the waves of what? Repeat after me, intercession. Intercession. Okay, now, I'm interceding for you because of what? You intercepting? I'm interceding for you because she Asked me. She, I was moving on to the next thing. She says, wait a minute, hold on. So the intercessor here, I'm interceding, but the intercessor is her. Amen. Okay? Enter the seed to enter the session. Intercession, intercede. Let's do it. Enter the seed to enter the session. So there's a session of bondage. There's a session of... Of, of deliverance. There's a session of breakthrough. There's a session of and the demonic forces enters in through a seed to interrupt the session. An intercessor does not pray for people. Intercessors prays as the person and not for the person. They bear the infirmities of that person. So where you needed a second chance but couldn't ask for it for yourself, the intercessor in the room picked it up and spoke on your behalf to bring me back to the front to deal with it. But what grip does the demonic force have on you that you can't articulate? What attack did you come up under in your ministry? Persecution. What does that mean? Um, persecution. The, like, when you begin ridicule. What did you do for that to happen? Nothing. Okay. Do you not know that if you cannot handle or endure persecution and ridicule, then you're not called? Do you not know that we as leaders are called to persecution. That's the Bible. We are called to it. That's what, that's what we do. There's a cross waiting for nails to be put into you. There's a cat and I, So when you hear leaders talking about, well, I'm just going through, blah, 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 blah. They're going through a season when they have stepped out of the spirit and have considered the flesh for a little while. So you got to have people to push you back into the spirit to remind you that you at your best when you're in the spirit. And because you're human, you'll fall into the flesh. Said so none of these Negroes don't care nothing about me and I don't even care. And you're like, I'm done with all of them. And then you get pushed back into the spirit and say, lift your hands and let God work. <laughs> I'll bring this out of you. And you, have, and you have no idea that the night before they got you delivered, they were going through the hell. And the hell that they were going through that night wasn't them, it was you. Because they were enter the session and the seed for you. I said, Pastor, you just don't know what I'm going through. Say, oh, you think I don't? Yes, I do. And so it's probably a good thing for you to be on the sidelines right now and not ministering to anybody because you 
are a small example of the first part of our lesson tonight when I said there's a difference between a demon having you and you having a demon. We've already confronted the demon that could have you. We can take authority over it, but you won't let him go. You have to let it go. You, you, you have to let it go. And you can't let it go because, remember, and when you have a demon, it brings certain comfort to you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that be breakthrough for you. Uh, our time is really, really running up to I don't like to be in church after a certain time. Uh, let's, let's take this question. Pastor, he was going to say, I want to hear it. I, no, I want to hear it. <laughs> well, um, I, I like to just ask one question, and I promise you I'm going to be quiet. Um, the church has been very comfortable with this new um, wave of quote unquote spirituality. Mm. The church are comfortable in a, they have adopted um, witchcraft in the church. They have adopted sage burning in the church. Okay. Everyone is spiritual in the church. And it seems as if the confusion now is I was looking at a documentary in New Orleans where there was an evangelist that now has incorporated witchcraft inside of the church. And so now the church, it, it, the Bible says Beelzebub cannot cast out Beelzebub. That's biblical. But, but what's going on? Why is this happening? And why has it been so broadly accepted but not exposed? So, so, so there's a problem in the church where they're comfortable, witches are comfortable. They intercede just like the intercessors. They preach just like the preachers. Um, I um, had one young lady and she said that the majority of her clients are bishops and she is a voodoo priest. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And she came to me because she no longer wanted to practice and she wanted to be free. And she said, well, let me tell you, the majority of my clients are, and she gave me names. Mm -hmm. So why is the church so comfortable? Why is astrology so accepted into the church? Um, as far as prophetics, now they're going to the astrologists. Um, they have accepted... Um, uh, certain prophets now have incorporated black magic, white magic, mm. and they're filling up arenas by the thousands, and they're shimmying, and they're shaking, and people are falling out, and this is not being addressed. So we're comfortable now with confusion, and that's a big problem. And so now, uh, people who want faith have gotten to the place where they've given up on the Holy Spirit and go find any spirit that can help break their broken spirit. So now the church is a total mass hysteria of spiritual confusion and nobody is addressing it. Why? Um... When it comes down to, let's, let's, let's deal with the um, astrology first, um, which is, um, pass me a, a book, a vantage point from the table real quickly if you can. Thank you so much. Um, astrology. Satan has robbed certain things from the church if, if, I, I'm going to put it this way, Pastor, first. Um, when the television first came out, they called it the, 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 the one-eyed devil. Okay? And so the, uh, the, 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 the Christians had it first. We're talking about in the 30s. And they, they had it first. They had the opportunity to do what you call it. They had the media. And they called it the, the one-eyed devil. And they preached against it and so on and so forth like that. And, 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 and so and well. Then you had ABC, uh, NBC, the different channels began to came, and they, they, they got it. The church did the same thing in 1995 when Windows, uh, when Windows first came out, just before the Internet started, started breaking. There wasn't people around uh, um, like yourself. Um, I'm still a slow person uh, uh, with it. 
that understood it immediately and wasn't afraid of it. It was, it, uh, you know, it first started out when I think it was a thing called MySpace. Okay. And um, uh, 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 the scriptures has prepared us for all of these things. The Bible says Jesus went to his disciples and said to the disciples, uh, come here, I'm going to talk to you later on. He said, well, Master, come with us now so we can show you the building of the temple, Matthew 24. And so they go out from the show and the building of the temple. And Jesus looks around. He says, see all these buildings, all these stones? There shall not be left one upon another that shall not be thrown down. And the disciples went on to him privately. And he said, tell us, Master, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus turned around. He used this word. He says, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying that they are Christ or of Christ and shall deceive many. So he talks about deception. Then he says this, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. That was World War I and World War II. He said, then you shall be afflicted and you shall be hated of all nations, the Holocaust. This is, this is, this, this, this is the Bible un unfolding the prophecies that folks are waiting to take place that already happened. See, that's, that, 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 that's the thing. Then he says, and then... There shall arise false crises, false crises that will enter into necromancing. So these are uh, false prophets hooking up with psychics and so forth, and they're entering into a fellowship. Then he says, a false prophet shall arise and shall have power to create an image, and the image shall speak artificial intelligence. I'm telling you, we're walking through the pages of the Bible. Uh, the, the democracies are failing all across the world because the Bible says that there's going to be a one world government with a one world leader. So in order for that to happen, the democracies have got to fall. So we're going to see the collapsing of democracies. If Donald Trump becomes the president of the United States of America this time around, if he becomes the president, if he gets in again this time around, there'll be a Trump in office for 30 years. His sons, his daughters, it will, it will shift from because they have attacked the media. This is what the Bible says. A time is going to come where they rather believe a lie than the truth. What is that? Fake news. If you know the Bible, you can take the Bible and you can walk through the pages of, of the Bible. But now here's the thing. The church is still caught up on who's having sex, who's gay. Who drinking? Who's got a, 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 a man, a boyfriend on the side? They, 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 they. <sighs> know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Either fornicators or adulterers, abusers of themselves with mankind. He didn't say when received the kingdom of heaven. He says shall not receive the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but is joy, peace, and the Holy Ghost. The Bible is saying when you do those things, you don't feel good about yourself. When you're washed in the blood of the Lamb, when you're cleansed by the power of God, repentance becomes the order of the day. So when you fall, you go back to God. You don't wallow in it. And you don't share things with people that can't handle certain things. Because they will move you out of your righteousness into condemnation you got that okay good so, <laughs> so 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 now you have here you have here all of these witches and these warlocks the reason why these guys can kind of acquiesce with them and fellowship with them is because satan hijacked years ago the zodiac sign he, he, where's that book I asked you for? You didn't bring it? I'm sorry. The, he, 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 he hijacked the, the zodiac sign. Remember, no angel saw or identified the star that was in the east. Mm -hmm. Who saw it? The Magi's. These were astronomers, warlocks. The warlocks, the astronomers, 
the stargazers, the charmers saw God before godly people saw it. And they saw it and sent assassins to kill him. So in this particular, everybody say abracadabra. If you look up the word abracadabra, abracadabra means I create as I speak. Who creates as they speak? God. The, the occult has taken our words like manifestation. I was in the grocery store and something happened. This lady, they're, they're okay, uh, this book is a uh, vantage point. This book carries you through all of the signs that we are, uh, that, that, that are under and shows you the scripture basis for it. Um, and the Bible says in the book of Genesis, he says this, he says, and God created a greater light to govern the day and a lesser light to govern the night. And the light that he called to govern the day was for times, seasons, signs, Days, months, seasons, winter, spring, summer, fall, time, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, <laughs> signs, Aquarius, Sagittarius. Th Satan walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Look at the stones of fire. The stones of fire are the birth stones to, each of, to all of us that are born up under it. Satan, when he stood before God, he stood carbuncle, sapphire, emerald. You take all of those and you'll come up with the 12 birthstones that all of us inhere to. Bishop, are you saying that the zodiac? No, I'm, I'm saying that the zodiac is demonic from the demonic side. What's your sign? What's your sign? Cancer. And, and, and. Gemini. Uh-huh. Well, I'm an Aquarius. An Aquarius is the water bearer. And the sign of the Aquarius is toting a bucket of water and pouring it into the mouth of fishes that are open. It's representative of the Holy Spirit pouring into vessels. Satan then takes those signs and corrupts it. I guarantee you, if you were to read the physical horoscope, there's a chapter in the book called No Horror in My Scope. If you read the horoscope in the Bible, in, 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 in the zodiac sign, I don't care how saved you are, you will find a piece of your personality. You'll find a piece of your personality. Why? Because Satan took it hijacked it and flipped it all up. So now these warlocks disguised as prophets now their job is to create a false church that looks like the true church because of it. Do we have one, do we have one of the signs that, that you can put up on this? Oh, you got one? Yeah, give me one. And we'll close with this. Forgive us for talking. I talked too late tonight, didn't I? Okay. Was this good, y'all? Yes, yes, Thank you so much. for Y'all have no idea. I am on fire. I've been, I, I'm, this is like my fourth one. But it's, 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 it's really, really something else. Okay, which one you got? Which one you want to do? Let's do Gemini. Gemini, the twins. <laughs> The twins can represent the marriage supper, for we will be united with him as one. The church and his body will be together as one. Created in his image, we will return to him to become as one. Now, remember, when you said Gemini, I said, huh, and I leaned back here on this, what you call here? Because the reason why I'm here is that you have an inward concern about what the church is. Your sign has assigned you to bring the world and the church together to prepare it to be presented for it. Read it one more time. This is Gemini. Uh-huh. The twins. The 
twins can represent the marriage supper, for we will be united with him as one. The church and his body will be together as one. Created in his image, we will return to him to become as one. So How did I get on this platform? Bishop Bloomer, you got to wake up. Bishop Bloomer, you got to come back. The body of Christ, the question that you, we, the question got us to this particular place right now. It's in your sign. What's your sign? Cancer? Yeah. Can you find cancer for me? The crab. Uh huh. The cancer symbolizes the fulfillment of God's promise through Abraham. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Genesis 22 and 17. Furthermore, the many legs of the crab are indicative of the many members in the body of Christ. For as the body is one and have many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. 1 Corinthians 12 and 12. What are yours? Scorpio. Scorpio. Scorpio, the scorpion. In the Hebrew, Scorpio is interpreted as deadly foe. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of the sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through 56. Jesus was afflicted, chastised, and wounded for our transgressions so that we could be free. Any of the signs that you take, you'll find Jesus walking through it, whether he's bruising him with his head, with, with, with bruising his head with his heel, whatever the situation is. Now, um, uh, imagine this. Satan now taking apart the thing of you that is correct and injecting it with a virus. Witchcraft is real. Witchcraft in the church is intimidation, manipulation. That do, do, do Aquarius. What are you? Taurus. Taurus. Taurus, the bull. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Psalms 92, verse 10. God brought them out of Egypt. He has, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Numbers 23, verse 22. The ox, or bull, represents a fierce, robust animal. However, this animal is also often used to serve. This is representative of the omnipotence of God, who also possesses the humility of a servant's heart. Though making his debut in the world, as the sacrificial lamb, he will return as the king of kings and lord of lords. Let me close with this for tonight. I was in a grocery store and something was happening at the register and there was a lady standing, a Caucasian lady, she was standing there. And uh, was happening and she said, uh, something went wrong. And she turned around and she said, hmm, the devil is a lie. So I turned around to her and I said, amen. I said, you're a Christian? She said, no. She said, why are you asking that? I said, oh, because you said the devil's lie. She said, oh, oh, no. I said, you're not a Christian? She says, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of kind of agnostic. And I said, oh. She said again, she said, why is that? I said, because you said the devil is a lie. She said, oh, I watch Medea. <laughs> Listen to me carefully. The term that we used to use, the devil is a liar, had power. Now it's a spoof. It's, 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 my grandson came and said to me, he said, Papa, I need to talk to you. And I said, what? He said, I went out on a date with this girl. I said, all right, Justin. He said, man, it was, I said, it was a good date. He said, it was a good date until she looked across the table and she said to me that she uh, manifested me. She said, you know how you got to this table. Now, I manifested. He said, you what? She said, I manifested you. He said, no, you didn't manifest. She said, yes, I did. You wouldn't even be sitting here had I not manifested you. In the schools, these young girls are sitting seven in a circle with a candle in dusk. They write the name of our sons and our daughters on pieces of paper, and they shout their name 36 times for six days. In the seventh day, the what the name they call appears in front of them. 
they're manifesting lesbians out of other girls who are straight. Oh, yeah, they're doing all kinds of, these are spells. We're going to get into it tomorrow and Saturday. He said, no, you didn't manifest. She said, yes, I did. You wouldn't even be sitting here if, if I didn't manifest you. He said, I said, so Justin, what you do? He said, she's crazy, so I binded it, her. <laughs> I said, you did what? He said, I binded it, it her. That little Negro didn't even know how to say, I bind her. I binded it, her. I said, you ain't binding it up. You ain't filled with no Holy Ghost. He said, yes, I am filled with the Holy Ghost. I said, when did you get filled with the Holy Ghost? He said, I got filled with the Holy Ghost when you got filled with the Holy Ghost because the Bible said the promise is to your children and your children's children. That's what my grandson said. I said, go on, boy, use. Use the power of your granddaddy against him. I told you, even a mimic anointing will work. Let us bless the Lord in this place tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we start, we start at 7, and it's my, it's my prayer that at 7, uh, we, we, we start, and by 9, 9, 15, 9, 30, we're walking through the doors t t tonight. You know. But that, that didn't bother you too much, did it? It didn't bother you too much. I need you to bow your heads the conference is free. We didn't charge you a registration or anything like that. There's expenses that goes along with it. And uh, I want to uh, just challenge you on this first night. In fact, have your seat real quickly. Let's do this together on this first night. I just want to challenge you in your seed sowing. And every need of this meeting is going to be met, especially when we get to the part of loosing your financial miracles that's been held up. And the dividends that's about to be released in your way is going to be unbelievable. All right. Now, I want to speak uh, real briefly to uh, 21 persons inside this room. How many people? I want to speak to 21 people in this room that will stand with me with an uncommon sea faith tonight of $223. And that's the number of the... Of the, uh, of the year that we're in. I know you're in this room. A sacrifice is not measured by how much you give. A sacrifice is measured by how much you have left. This, uh, something ought to die when you, when you release this so that something can come alive. 21, and I'm using numbers tonight because it's important. 21 is the number of angelic traffic, angels in the atmosphere. God is so serious about numbers that, ha, shakataba. He's so serious about numbers that there's a whole book in the Bible called the book of numbers. The book of numbers. Your breakthrough is coming forth out of your obedience tonight in the name of Jesus. 21 persons. Now, if I was prophesying tonight and calling your name and all that kind of stuff, you'd be trying to pass your food stamp card. This was a master's class. It's a master's class. In my private deliverance classes, it's in, in, in my special mentoring classes, people pay $1,500 to sit for two hours to receive what we're pouring out tonight to prepare you for what God is about to do in this season. There are 21 of you in here tonight. Your sea challenge is 223. Stand up on your feet. Those of you that's going to sow that seed in the name of Jesus. Father, I commit this to you tonight in the name of Jesus. That broke days will come to an end. That broke days will come to an end. I promise you at no time in this meeting did me, uh, the pastor, the bishop, have any discussion about money we didn't discuss this, how well, you got to pay this, and do blah, blah, blah. We did this through and by faith in the name of Jesus. We spared no expense, pulled it together, and I think tonight was a successful night. Father, now release this in this room in the name of Jesus. Those of you that's going to do it, raise your hand. Let me see. That's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, that's five, that's six, that's seven, that's eight. That's nine, that's 10, 
All right? All right? There's uh, uh, 13 others. As you're preparing to do your seed now, in the name of Jesus, Father, loose this in this house tonight. Loose it in the name of Jesus. There's others here tonight that said, you know, Bishop, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to happen by Friday, but I know tonight I can sow a seed of 100. I can do 110. There's others that can do 113. The person to stand up with 110, you stand next to them with the 113. Let's do this blessing in the name of Jesus. Let's fill this room with 21 persons sowing this seed, 21 groups sowing the seed of 223 in the name of Jesus in this room tonight. Father, we just thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Bishop, I can do 100. I can do, I, I can do 100. Come on, stand up on your feet, whoever you are. Let's do this in the name of Jesus and watch God bless and multiply. The rest of you that can sow a seed of 50, uh, I try and believe that everyone can at least do $30 tonight in this main offering. Let's believe God for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and bring it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Everyone get a seed in your hand. Elijah, how old was you when you started traveling with me? 14, 14 years old. That's how old I am. Uh -huh. You look older than me. Yeah. <laughs> when you're lonely, heart filled with despair, remember God cares. When you're in doubt and you can't find your way out, he will see you through. See you through, see you through. Just call on the name of Jesus. No need. Has everyone given? Now, Father, bless the giver as well as the receiver. Multiply every gift. Give it back onto your people. Good measures. Press down, shaking together, running over. In Jesus' name, amen. Tomorrow night, I'm going to avail some time to stand in front of our uh, step and repeat and do some pitches with you and uh, hit my table. Make sure you get the book, Witchcraft in the Pews. Intimidation, manipulation, and domination is going to bless your life. We're back in the hands of the pastor. Everybody standing. Let's get ready to go home. Come on, clap your hands again for Bishop George Bloomer. Come on, clap your hands in here. Amen. We're getting ready to go. So tomorrow night, somebody say tomorrow night. So what I need you to do tonight is share. Make sure you share this uh, uh Tag some people in it, inbox some people, let them know, um, let them know what happened tonight and that they don't want to miss tomorrow night. 
Uh, he, has, he has given us some of the things he's going to be speaking about, but I don't know about you. It's so much came out tonight that just, amen, that blew our minds. Amen. Clap your hands again. Father, we thank you right now. We bless you, God, and we glorify you. Thank you right now, God, for honoring this house, honoring this church. We thank you right now, God, for these people that are present, God, here and online. We thank you right now, God, for breaking up the fallow ground. We ask you right now, God, as we continue, God, that you would expose. Bless you, God, and we glorify you right now for everything that you have done and what you will do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hug somebody on the way out. <laughs>